uh, uh, Shemar profile? No. So that's me. Uh, I'm. Why do I talk about this digital gap? Because I'm double culture. Uh, I have double cultural uh, culture, double national nationality, double culture, uh, double language. I grow with, between two languages. That's why my English is so terrible. I apologize for that. And while in Peru, I went to a German school. My mother is German. Uh, I was culturized German, and uh, I lived 12 years in in Berlin. So. Um, I am Peruvian and I am German. So I am part of a developed country and I'm part of an underdeveloped country. I am part of both. And that's why I experienced my whole life the difference. And in the, in the underdeveloped countries, you're usually quite conscious of the developed countries because you, we have also media. We are your network uh, media colony. If the Spains wouldn't have come, we would be the colony of Netflix. OK, um, so I mean, also that was colonies anyway. Anyway, the world has been always a cultural mix in all its history. Thing is that uh, in the developed countries, so surely exist an absolute oblivion of the other half of the uh, world. In my perception, it's a half of the world. There are two halves, but to be real, it's most of the world which doesn't have the same possibilities that the other little part of the world. Uh, yeah, do you understand me well? Yes. Are you? Is there... No. Are you? Are you passing? Are you moving into your slide? Not now. I'm ah, coming. Okay. I will ask you. It's, Next it's one. Fine, it's fine. It's the slide. Um, it's oblivion. Yeah. Um, we are not thinking usually, I, when I say we, I will be schizophrenic because I will be the developed country and I will be the underdeveloped country, okay? Um, so, um, guys, we usually are not thinking about the different people. That's natural. Uh, that's as natural as bias as natural as not thinking would how would i be if i don't hear one ear how would i be if i don't have the legs because i have two legs i develop for two legs i develop for somebody like myself that's normal but we have to be aware like in the case of accessibility we have to be aware how other people are otherwise we are exclusive Ex uh, and if we exclude somebody we are doing harm. If we don't consider the others, we are doing harm. So we, there's no need to be uh, um, have a bad conscience about not saving the world, about not donating or whatever. The world is different. The harm, if you want to be a, have a ha bad conscience, have it about turning off awareness, about uh, voluntary ignorance. So. Uh, I mean, we are, have normal, normal countries, we have skyscrapers and everything, okay? So, the promise, promise of the metaverse is a world full of opportunity. We can use it as a second home, uh, it will be your daily workplace, it will be your office or center production. Sorry, I will bring you down from there right now. Uh, as the uh, UN uh, Deputy Secretary says, even as we recognize its vast potential of new technologies, metaverse, and it has a huge potential, we must, con must contend the risks. And the risks uh, came, one of the risks, we have uh, this uh, amazing uh, um, convention uh, with amazing cap capacity of Mohammed to bring so much interesting people. Uh, we are uh, talking about different things uh, of the risk. I am going to talk specifically about the inequity of the opportunities in the real world, which usually falls into oblivion. OK, four things, income versus tech. OK, less money, less tech. OK, that's 
uh, so will, what usually uh, people in Germany and the rest of the world forget is the difference of the developed world, forgets is the difference of income per capita, then it says there is differ, a different price per tech and difference of infrastructure, infrastructure uh, whatever, sorry, my English, as I said, is very bad. Uh, so says a global, global digital divide, that's the reality. That's much more complex than the North-South divide. Greetings from the global South, by the way. So, um, okay, that's e uh, easy to say. Uh, worldwide people with less money can buy less tech. Yeah, just for, to be funny, I'm going to talk about US, okay? In US, 40, uh, a quarter part of the country has less than $30,000 per year. We would love to have this uh, low income. And that of that part, a, car, uh, a quarter of them don't have smartphones, 40% not computer, most no, comp, uh, no ta tablets. This was the World Economic Forum last year. I can share every data, every number I want to give you. I can send, I, if you ask me, I can send you all the documents. Okay? Uh, and my documents are mainly the UN, World Economic Forum, and that kind of thing. So, the next point, different income per capita. Uh, my dear uh, Jean-Philippe, I just found out how much do you pay for your transport. You pay, the lowest uh, fare you pay for transport are, is three francs, with no reduction. Okay. Uh, the lowest what I pay in Lima is one sol. One sole for France. So your transport is 12 times more expensive than mine. That's the same thing with my income, with my food, with a coffee. I hate when people write uh, in internet, because internet is not for one quant, it's for the whole world. Oh, my software just costs you one coffee. Guy, where? In your country? In the US, in New York, fine, but you, if you put it on the internet and want to get to the whole world, consider that the whole world doesn't pay the same money for a coffee. So my coffee is, uh, my transport is 12 times cheaper than yours. So uh, if that's uh, Oculus Quest, $300 isn't cheaper here. So it will cost me 12 times more than your. So income is relative. And also, the smartphones cost the same in the different parts of the world, we suppose. So, <laughs> sorry, I laughed a little, but when she said everybody can have a, a smartphone, that's not absolutely true, totally true, because, okay, so much more smartphones, but for somebody, for 2.4 billion people, a smartphone, smartphone, the cheapest one, which won't be enough for uh, augmented reality, this one isn't. Uh, is a quarter of the average monthly income. And in Africa, it's 62%. And you can do uh, mixed reality and uh, et cetera. It's the cheapest one. Okay? So, uh, oh, this is for E2. Uh, um, also, uh, uh, inter international United Nations uh, numbers. Okay? So, then another thing. The, the smartphone isn't hasn't the same price. In the US, you know, the tech is cheaper than in Europe? Fine. If I go to a commodity store here in Lima, I pay the double, 100%, $600 for the cheapest Oculus uh, Quest. So the most affordable of Oculus Quest costs me 24 times more than it costs in Geneva. Okay. Uh, and I'm talking about Lima. Imagine uh, Lima is the capital of, the, of a developing country. It's not an underdeveloped country. And imagine how much uh, will, will it cost in our rural areas. Imagine how much will tech cost in one in the rural areas or one of the 46 underdeveloped countries of the world. Says there are huge difference. Let's go to the next thing. Uh, the connectivity has also also another price. What you see, sir, on the, on the map is how much it costs 
in the, uh, the difference. The, the dark is most expensive. So in Africa, it costs much more to get internet than in Europe, than in US. So where you where you need it more, it's more expensive, kind of. Okay. So we have much more expensive internet than in Europe. Then uh, this is of 214, but it, I hope it gives you a, it gives you an idea. Yeah. Um, so we have this in in a in a in a inequality of price of cost for getting access to the tools of creation content of the tools of information of the tools of opportunities of all possibilities to contribute to the metaverse we can't okay so it's not as easy no it, it's not a world of equity of new opportunities for everybody so everybody is like a little little percentage of the world so is this for example how much did a zoom call really cost if we if we take the in this difference of income if and we take the cost of uh, communication we'll see that um in malawi you uh, you will pay a 15 uh, percent of your monthly income into uh for one hour of uh uh, Zoom, Zoom for have found 540 uh, MB. So this uh, this conference, kind of seven hours, which cost you about 75% of your monthly income. Would you do it? Would you pay so much of your monthly income to this to, to one come to this conference? I, I mean, it is absolutely absolutely worth it. But can start? Do you start to feel privileged? Because we are privileged. And this is the main thing I don't I want people not to forget. We are privileged for where we had the good luck to be born. Because I have no responsibility of being born in a family which enough money to give me the tools of study. But it, it's not my fault. So it's not your fault be in a place with money or without money, and you don't have to feel pity about our places. Just be aware. Okay. Um, now, another thing: difference of infrastructure. In fact, sorry for my language again, but I think uh, you're getting the idea of what I'm trying to tell you. Uh, Half the world has no internet. That's not a phrase. That's exactly 3. Point, no, not exactly. Uh, approximately 3.8 billion people of the world don't have internet. Okay. Um, yeah, it's true. There are, there's more broadband. I mean, there's more uh, 3G and 4G in the world. That's absolutely true. But that's an, that doesn't mean that it carries internet. And it doesn't mean that this internet is stable, nor that it's fast nor that it can uh, uh, carry a lot of information. You uh, see, uh, uh, you can see uh, in, the, in the E2 2021 uh, uh, um, um, yeah, um, statistics that most part of this, uh, of the rest of the people, of the rest of the billion, uh, to uh, whatever people, a big part of them don't have stable internet don't have broadband and use and the internet users often use device of other people so half the people half world of the people have, doesn't have internet the rest doesn't have an internet enough for all uh, sacred metaverse okay so the fastest country in the world has 274 mbps and the slowest 1.3 and the world average wouldn't be if I, I mean between two um, between 300 and one, the average is kind of 150, isn't it? No, we have a, a global average 27. Why? In 215, uh, 200, because there's also an inequality there in the speed. In 214, I know that's quite old. 50% uh, of the broadband was in three countries of the world: Japan, USA, China. Okay, today. It's better, okay. But anyway, 
40, 50% of the hyperscale data centers is now in two, in two countries, China and US. Okay, so the broadband is not uh, uh, either uh, uh, equal. Um, so <laughs> this is uh, funny. Uh, um, wait a minute. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. this is funny. Why do we believe then with all this data? Why do we believe so strongly in computers when, for the vast majority of society, computer access is not a reality? Well, this asks Stanford IT students about the US, <laughs> not about the world. So, yeah, why? Why do we why do we believe so so much in all these opportunities if it's so unreal? And guys, so also and you can get it uh, from say I2, A2 and other um, uh, statistics. So also urban rural gap also in first world, also in the US, also in Europe. So a generational gap. Okay, that's obvious. And there's also a digital gender divide much more men have access than women, I think also in the US and Europe. Okay, I guess Europe a little bit less, but uh, we have to check that numbers. But for the rest of the world, that's also true. So, that's a reality. Let's get back to the metaverse. Matthew Ball, which uh, is, a Microsoft, is a Metaverse Premier, uh, I think Zuckerberg has forced all his collaborators to, to read it. He says, the Metaverse will revolutionize nearly every industry and function. It will create new industries, marketplaces, resources, novel type of skills, professions, certifications. The collective value will be in the trillions. A lot of money for who? Um, well, he has um, a, go a good definition. I recommend for people who think that Metaverse is one platform, like uh, one game or an app or what, that is Metaverse is one on what platform only, I recommend to read him uh, about the interoperability and also other factors of industry, of inter interoperability and, uh, as I say, of connection and uh, economic, why it's, this is an industry nearly and not only one platform, one game like Fortnite, Second Life or whatever. Um, yeah, I recommend to read his, uh, his definitions online. And he has H core for categories and only take two. Hardware, which means um, Physical technologies and devices used to access, interact with, and develop with uh, Anthony de described so well. And connectivity, which he says that has to be really a reliable, ultra low latency, extremely high broadband. <laughs> because he said he says we should think of the metaverse of as raising the requirements of all aspects of networking, latency resilience and bandwidth. I don't say really ability because it's too difficult for me now. Uh, and, it, and one thing more, if you don't, he says that if you have, uh, besides this connectivity, I mean, it doesn't matter how powerful your device is, your computer, your head, uh, head mounted display, your phone is, if you don't have, uh, if you don't receive all the information in a timely fashion, if you have the right connectivity. So you need extra high tech equipment and you need a extremely high, perfect connectivity. Guys, we're up, okay? I just showed you how our connectivity is in the most part of the world. I, I told you that we, okay, how inaccessible and uh, uh, not affordable are uh, is uh, hardware and, and the connectivity, even if you, we have some money, we can buy it. I'm here in Pisac near Cusco and even with $3 million, uh, I could buy the internet cable because it doesn't, I mean, there's no optic cable here. It isn't. It's not, and because there are mountains, because uh, kilometers, we, because look once at the cables in the, uh, in the sea. The, 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 the beautiful cables and the um, fiber optic uh, the backbones. How many connect Europe with US? How many connect Africa with uh, South America? None. 
they all go up and again down. Okay. So, um, oh shit, I'm sorry, I'm over time. I still have four slides of, I don't know, five slides. Can I finish? Sorry, Constantine, I, I know you're waiting to come. Uh, I will speak faster. No problem, no problem. Go ahead, it's very interesting. Thank you, thank you. So, uh, yeah, okay, thank you a lot. Um, so metaverse is an emergent form of digital industry. We are in the age of digital industry. And this, and mainly the data-driven uh, uh, digital industry with IoT, AI, and all that, okay? But we're in the age of the in digital industry. And <laughs> the Digital Economy Report says about the undertitle is okay, cross border data flows and development for whom the data flow. Also, the report itself of the UN Nations, uh, United Nations, I think, is for whom the data flows. It's a question about for who. It's not about what's happening, but for who. And that's my point. Yeah. Yeah. Your heat just has. Um, okay, go. Who has audio? Sorry. Okay. So, the problem with uh, with Sally, can you turn off your uh, mic? Thank you. Uh, the, the problem with this digital industry is that it requires certain hardware which is not openly affordable. It requires certain connectivity which is the same. It's not very affordable, but also there's no equal infrastructure in the world globally, nor is it in price, nor in quality. So metaverse is an industry which depends on restricted access technology and therefore it is excluded. And as you see by the numbers I gave you, it is a reality that no, it isn't that equal, that hardware, hardware and so on. So with the digital industry, we had a chance in third world. I will, okay, I'm second, not in third, but I speak for third because I grew up in the third. Now we went to second, okay? so. We had opportunities. We could learn digital skills like STEM, STEAM. We could build with open source, make a culture. That was a change. The fourth revolution, okay, one of the definitions of the fourth, fourth industrial revolution had to do with make a culture. And the uh, data-driven digital industry could gradually integrate us and it was not indispensable to survive. But now the metaverse is less about contents. It's more about, it's more based Okay, it has content, but it's based on devices and high quality connectivity and a part of the world will be excluded and fall back. What does that mean? It's a future, a future jobs report says the exclusion effect, less industry, less job opportunities, there will be a regression. So metaverse and all its enthusiasm is developing with respect to the real world. It will be a symbol of inaccessibility because it will create a double virtuality. What is anti-travel now gets inaccessible. So, uh, solution. Okay, sorry. Uh, okay, yeah, we don't need. Guys, it's not about money. It's about equity. We need the same chances. Uh, we as it like like in in accessibility. We have to be aware of the others, and we have to know there are others. Okay, we, you don't see them. You may usually with accessibility the same problem. We, we, okay, if somebody doesn't have legs, you can see it, but if somebody is deaf, you don't see it. If somebody hears doesn't hear one ear, doesn't see you right. If somebody is old and can't perceive as you, you don't see it. But you have to be aware. The same as you don't see a big part of the world, but you have to be aware. And so it's so, so important that uh, uh, we, it's a metaverse to real be a chance for the world and make all this great change to ma make everybody happy and be, uh, if you want to continue being enthusiastic about it, I ask you to pay a special attention to its opening towards low tech and low connectivity. So I invite people who want to contact me. Let's build open hardware devices like uh, 60UF, uh, homemade 60UF. Let's uh, people please support open standards. This is the only chance that we get any degree of democratization. 
So um, be aware, you, uh, it will make a change. If you do something of some of somebody else comes and if somebody comes and say he has amazing app and you you will be if you're aware you will ask him okay can i use it if i only here in one year can i use it if i live in paraguay um okay so uh in Cote d'Ivoire. no so yeah that's me uh thank you um i'm uh, yeah that will be safe. There are my contact uh, info. I'm happy to contact and to talk about everything. And again, thank you, Constantine. I didn't see the chat. Uh, thank you, uh, Constantine, for for uh, and the others which came after me for the patience because I'm quite late. Thank no, you. No, no, you are not alone. You are welcome. No problem. You're welcome. And oh, brilliant! A great, great like you. Dynamism and uh, yeah. It's, Thank you. You open. You have opened our eyes, and uh, I hope people will hear your your call. Uh, 